Rambo. Come on, something. Come on. Swing and a miss. There's a lot of fun. Don't throw it. Wow. 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 Unbelievable. There is no higher pinnacle of super mega baseball achievement than reaching the promised land that is the XBL World Series. Many have given their all and have fallen short, while a proud few stand tall as the game's most hallowed and experienced players. We tango now under the bright lights of prime time, forging a path forward for one team to get their shot at the hardware and put their name in the history books. Welcome to the XBL semifinals. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back into another production of the Cross-Platform Baseball League. This is the XBL Semifinals, games number three and four. My name is Weaver for Prez. Tonight, I will be your play-by-play -play commentator, and I am joined here in the booth by one of the co-commissioners of the league. His name is Dwayne. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing fantastic, Weaver. It's great to be back for some more playoff baseball, especially here in the XBL. We've seen a lot of electricity from our AAA semifinals, uh, our World Series there now set. We had some AA games on feature from that World Series uh, over the past week, and now we're picking it back up again, like you said, XBL semifinals. So this is exciting. There's big, big time baseball on our hands this evening. Games three and four of Lazy and Luke. Yeah, two games between the Mallards and the Blackbirds. The first two games, they were split between the two. Game one going to Lazy, game two going to Luke Archer. Uh, both pretty well-pitched games from both sides. I'd say Luke maybe had the pitching edge overall, uh, despite some very late uh, fireworks in game one from uh, Lazy. And uh, that's one of our keys tonight is they traded punches when we began this series a few days ago. You know, we could see them trade punches here again. And if we do, then we're, suddenly we're looking at a, a long series, Dwayne. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but game two the other night was, I believe, Luke's first win over Lazy in the uh, the two seasons in which he's played against him. Uh, so for him to come out and um, win a game, you know, especially after losing game one by a, a decent margin, Lazy came out pretty strong in game one, you know, offensively and on the mound, uh, as we expect him to. Uh, that was that was big props to Luke, and I think he's got himself on good footing to try and take more out of this series. Like you said, it could be a long one, the way those two played the other night here on 93 Ego. Yeah, and our second key, unconventional pitching. This is something we've talked about a million and one times in the last couple seasons during uh, Luke Archer's various playoff series, and he's had plenty of them. Uh, he runs a, a, a pitching setup where he likes to alternate starter one, high velo, starter two, low velo, then back to the high, then back to the low. And it does seem to throw off some of these opponents, uh, particularly in the Final Four, the semis in the World Series, which is where you know he's been playing most of the last couple seasons, where the ego is raised from 90 to 93. Yeah, that is very much true. Luke is uh, very good at keeping the other player off step. And, you know, like you said, he's going up against them in high-pressure situations and big series against the best in the world. He's playing against Ashnod's Coupon. He was playing against Florabelle. Now he's going up against Lazy. And, and each and every time you showed that, you know, that ability to switch it up and, and do things a little bit unconventionally, uh, against the meta, if you it, per se, uh, yeah. it should to have some success. And you know he's seen himself in one World Series already, countless semifinals. You know pushing it to the limit. Uh, but you know it's he's got to get a big payoff in the end and, and win a series like this. Uh, you know and, and or World Series to to prove that that unconventionalness is you know the way you know to get it done. Yeah, and our our final key exquisite eyes. If you've ever played either of these guys, then. Uh, it's no secret. These are probably the best two batter's eyes in the in the XBL. I, I would I honestly, I think Luke might be the the most patient and trained eye of, up at the plate, especially on 93. Now, that's not any knock against Lazy. He is right there behind Luke. Uh, I think if we if we keep count this game, I think Lazy might chase a couple more than Luke does over the course of the night. But uh, walks and uh, and strikeouts, those things like that, they're going to be few and far between tonight. And when they do happen, they're going to be pretty big. 
Yeah, absolutely. These two need to hit the edges on the map on uh, when they're pitching, because like you said, that they're rarely going to be chasing out of the zone. We did see a little bit of chasing in games one and two uh, that you and I were able to witness. And like you said, I think some of it was more on Lazy's end. So uh, we'll see if Luke can play those edges again tonight, get Lazy swinging at baseballs, because uh, there isn't a lot of looking strikeout potential with these two, unless you're literally right there. I mean, and, and then you got to use that velocity, like we've said time and time again, to, to paint corners, you know, or else it's too easy for hitters like this to catch up with. But uh, that in conjunction with the 93 ego bump, I mean, uh, we'll see how the strikes are in place tonight for sure. This best of seven series is all tied at one. Game three is coming right up, folks. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Sakura Hills, the site of game number three, as it was in game number one. This is the longtime home of Lazy and his his multiple teams, formerly the the uh, Jackals, the Black Jackals, now the Black Birds. Players will exchange their pleasantries, get ready to play here. Game number one here at Sakura, it was Luke Archer striking for two in the first inning off of a misplay in center field. Thanks to the bat of Nymphie ACI, who bats now versus Yose Yish, who features that low velocity. In there for strike one. We're underway. It's a 1 1 count. Nymphie ACI looking to get aboard for that meaty part of this order. Yose Yish, no earned runs in this postseason, but a 99.9 .9 whip. Need the mathematicians to tell me how that worked out. Outfield comes shallow for. Lazy's outfield defense. Luke sticking with the contact swing, but he works a walk. Missing a few too many times. There was Lazy. And a speedy Nymphy ACI has reached. Angie Affleck now with a runner aboard. Yose Yish not, not a lot of velocity combined with that catcher arm behind the plate. Could spell disaster for the base running if Luke decides to test. A quick welcome in to the Raiders of Sir Arios. Of course, if you were with us the other night, Arios made a wonderful play-by-play -play debut for us on the channel. Luke stole second. Now going to get him over to third. Affleck should be thrown out at first. She is 90 feet away. Stands the potential first run of this game for the Mallards. Platerinkos swings through the fastball. Looping that curveball in there beautifully is Lazy. Yosei Yish, two strikes in the count here. Platerinkos does a good job fouling it off. 
Just needs to put it in play and score the speedy Nymphy ACI. 15th pitch of the inning, checked on by Platerinkos. Oh, a beautiful fastball inside, only 90 miles per hour, but just on the corner enough to elicit the check swing out of Luke, and he took it looking. So now two down, Camille Peckin. She's got the RBI opportunity, and she cashes in. Left center field gap cut off nicely by Yakko. Holding over at first is going to be Luke, but it is 1-0 Milwaukee Mallards. Now the third baseman, number three. Schnau stuck build third. Now with a runner on first. Swings through the fastball. Bit of a mislocation there for Rezzy. This is outside there. Duck Bill the third. He's hitting 405 in this postseason. Contact swing on the curveball. It's bounced off the glove of Kid K, but it's no problem for her. It lands in front of her. And she will get the third out, but that's how the first inning ends with a run on the board for the Milwaukee Mallards. If you're just joining us, this is game three of the XBL semifinals PVP League. These semis are played at 93 batting ego. Two of the best hitters that have ever bought a copy of this game going at it for a chance at the World Series. A trip to the World Series, rather. One down here in the first. It's Kaki Campbell getting the assignment in this pivotal game three. Working with a fastball here, but missing. It was a wild one. Luke, fortunate it didn't tail over the plate. Good strike there. Runs the count full. He's going to try and loop the curve in. Placed well. Hammered left field, but Turducken, he's got it. Two down. So Amy B starts her count off with a strike. Took it looking on the outside corner. Hammers that center field. It's going to drop in front of Nymphie ACI. Two out single for her. Brings up the cleanup hitter, Jackie Stacky. He's got the RBI man trait. Keep an eye on Lazy's runner at first. Should he want to move the runner to act the RBI man? It's not going to happen. He gives it a ride down the right field line. First base woman, she grabs it. And that's how the first inning ends. It's 1-0 Mallards. Teddy Turducken now, five, six, and seven for the Mallards here in the second. My co-star here in the booth, Dwayne, he'll be rejoining me shortly. Two and two count now, facing Yosei Yish. Looking to get aboard with the leadoff man. And again, and he does another leadoff walk, two innings in a row. Yosei Yish loses her man, Gwendolyn Gadwell now. Trying to go up the middle, and he does. The first two have reached here in the second. Broke goes into the cutoff. The shortstop Dizzle. A threat here in the second for Luke. Maxine Quack's going to have to move the runners over, but the, catch, the pitcher spot lurking on deck. Rips at the first pitch. Everyone's going to move up 90 feet. Throw comes into home, but there was no chance. Of, hindsight's 20-20, but the catcher dropped it. But Kaki Campbell now, the pitcher. Lazy looking for a ground ball. Ball one. Ball two. Ahead in the count is Khaki Campbell. Lazy having some control issues, but spots a nice fastball there. Followed by a good curveball. So the count even, two and two. Luke with a good check swing, full count to the pitcher. Right down the middle. He swings and misses even at 93, just not prepared for it. And that's a big first out for Lazy, but we are back to the top of the order. Good speed at first and third, not so much at second. Luffy ACI, she's got 10 RBIs in limited postseason action. She's going to go with a bunt, but the out has made it home. The throw to first, not in time. Not the bunt he was looking for. It's a force out at the plate, and now there's two down. Lazy, he's a pitch away from getting out of this unscathed. Hammered, shortstop. Dives, makes the catch. On to first in the dirt, scooped by Kid K. And Lazy survives the second. No damage surrendered. What a play. Number 
That decision to bunt, coming back to bite Luke Archer. Wanted to get it more to the left or to the right of the pitcher. Instead, got it right at him. Made the play very easy. He's pitching well here in, in uh, recovery here in the bottom of the second. Two very quick outs. Luke does not feature the most high-powered bullpen. He, he can be effective with it. But the longer he can leave his starters in, the more that's going to help him. Look at this. Very quick inning. The offense is going to get back out there for the Mallards in the top of the third. And welcome back to Dwayne here in the booth. We've got a good one so far. one nothing uh, Mallards. Yeah, Luke able to squeak out a run early. Sorry about that, guys. I had to step away to take a call. Now we are back in the action. Top of the third. Now you can see Luke making some great contact early in this game. That's pressing lazy a little bit. He's got to play around the strike zone. We already talked about how exquisite the eyes of both these players are. And Luke's taking advantage, swinging early and uh, swinging often. Trying to bloop one down the left field line, but it's going to hang up a little bit too long. So Applebaum has it with no issue. Two down quickly here following the leadoff single. Teddy Turducken looking to find a gap or more. He's got a great looking uh, average, you know, and two home runs, five RBIs so far in this playoffs. So an opportunity with two outs here, like you said, definitely trying to find a gapper. Oh, but a great pitch from Lazy to paint and strike him out. Yeah, Luke switching to that contact swing to make sure he can cover whatever comes his way. Opts not to swing at that as it was beautifully placed by Lazy. You know, sometimes I think we people forget just how uh, skilled Lazy is on this side of the ball. Everyone thinks of him as... as an incredible hitter because he is He's also a very skilled pitcher. Yeah, Lazy, one of the players who generally suffers from his ability to end games early on the pitching end. You know, he uh, puts up runs so quickly and so often, he'll mercy a lot of players, so his pitching stats just don't get a lot of love. But usually, of all things considered, you're looking at averages. Uh, he's up in there in the top three or four pitchers every single season he's played. Locked in now is Khaki Campbell and only 27 pitches thrown. This one. Lazy was looking for a line drive hit in front of Affleck, but she gets there first. And that, that's a one base runner surrender through the first nine outs of this game for this Mallard's pitching staff. They are picking up right where they left off and another single for Luke. He is doing good, getting runners on, swinging, you know, right at these edge pitches, using good timing to push them into the outfield. And, uh, you know, that's the name of the game. You got to attack if someone's going to be playing your, the edges like that. And, you know, you have an eye as good as Luke's. So now it's Maxine Quack. She's got two strikes. Pop, center field. Does it fall in front of the center fielder? It does. Off his glove, rather. First two have reached. Maybe a break for Luke. Uh, with no outs, I wouldn't say Khaki Campbell is any sort of a, you know, easy out here against CSA East. Lazy has to be really careful where he leaves any of these pitches. We saw an unsuccessful bunt with Nymphiaceae in a similar situation. All of a sudden, Khaki Campbell works a four-pitch walk. And here is that situation we saw earlier. Luke did not cash in with bases loaded, no one out, and top of the order up. He's got to do better here. She's going to foul the first pitch off. Yeah, an MPACI player who can make contact pretty much anywhere in the zone. Great pitch from Lazy to get him off step. But to walk the pitcher, you know, a minute ago on four pitches, that was very uncharacteristic of Lazy. This one's ripped to the left side, and that'll be at least one run. One indeed. And tense now is Yose Yeesh. On the ropes is Lazy here with two, three, and four hitters that might get a chance here. Luke has an opportunity to deliver a death blow, but he's going to pop this one up to the catcher. One down. Yeah, Aflac's a hitter he wants to uh, to really have success with, so pitch he wants back there for sure, Luke, against the SAE. She's back up to neutral quickly after that, but this one ripped up the middle by Platarinkos, I believe it was, and that'll be another run. So good station-to-station uh, -station baseball here from the Mallards. Let's see if he can continue to add with uh, less than two outs. Yeah, and every run's so crucial playing someone like Lazy. But this could be the end of the inning. On to Dizzle, on to K, and it's a double play. Now they score twice, but Lazy does a good job there, getting the twin killing and limiting the damage. Not going to blame Luke at all for swinging at a pitch like that. He just didn't get his right. best swing on it. Uh, you know, with a hitter like Peckin, too, he really thought he could probably drive it. He was feeling the hot hand there. Uh, let's see if that hot hand, though, continues on the hill. He's done great so far, only allowing that one base runner. That'll be a quick out to start the fourth as well. If he keeps getting these quick outs, and he does, 
combined with the hit and the walk for Kaki Campbell, we could see one of the quicker uh, on fires that we've ever seen in the XBL. We don't see them very often. We never see them with position players. Sometimes we'll see them with pitchers. We may have jinxed him here. Platerikos has to throw hard. Ooh. He does. A brilliant inning once again for Luke's pitching. The offense back to the task. Oh, a play like that in a game like this, you know, when you're up against lazy, you know, that's that almost fires you up more than like a, a just a huge dive in the outfield. Just that play was so close at first, and you never know what's gonna happen when a hitter like lazy can extend an inning. So to just close the door on another quick one, clean frame, that's huge. So now Teddy Turducken following a, a soft out for out number one. We're in the top of the fifth. Mallard's by three. Yose Yish still working out there. Lazy has a wonderful bullpen. And the more singles that Luke peppers in this game, uh, you got to wonder about the leash of Yish. No rhyming intended, but here we are. Gwendolyn Gadwell now. Yeah, Sheesh, what is the leash on Yose Yish? <laughs> She just goes after the curveball. Hits. Yeah, and the, it's seemingly all up the middle. I know there's been exceptions, but Luke's so good on the timing. And he is just not fooled much by this low velocity. That's going to be something to watch for in game four is the, the script should be flipped. 76th pitch of the evening for Yeesh. Fouled off. You have to wonder how lazy played this. You know, Maybe this is his number four that he's trotted out in game three. Uh, let's see and if the switch up uh, is available for him in the next game. Oh, this one's on the ground. 5-4-3 double play should be in order, and it is. Good one uh, from Lazy to keep a clean frame. Yeah, that's back-to-back -back innings where Lazy's ended it with an inning-ending ground ball double play. Into the bottom of the fifth. There's a hit for Lazy. Finally gets a base runner on. That was a long string of retired batters in a row. This one is of the leadoff variety. Kid K now with a man aboard. Got to be careful where you leave those off-speed pitches against hitters like Lazy. Luke knows that. Uh, lucky to give up a single there as he plays the edge with the curve. Let's see if he can do it again. He, there's another single from Lazy. Those are the kind of pitches, you know, really good in theory, just not quite out of the zone enough uh, to get the soft contact that Luke's needing there. Yeah, anytime you go off-speed to Lazy, it basically has to be perfect. This one hammered deep left field Turducken. He's on the run, leaves his feet. He's got it! Gets it back to the infield. Everyone's going to be safe, but what a catch. That is a jaw-dropping grab from Luke. More great defense, more fine margins here for the Mallards, and we're only in the fifth inning of this game, so there's a ton left in this to unpack. Uh, Luke's playing great baseball in pretty much every facet. Two strikes to Jay Dizzle. Activates the whiffer trade, and he whiffs. Away. Two down. You say, Yeesh, is this the opportunity for Lazy to take a route? It is. I'm just going to say, Luke just cleaned out on that strikeout. Just rearing back there, fireballing right at Lazy. I don't, I, he can't even handle the tempo that Luke was coming at him there. Continues to work fast with Khaki Campbell. It's Bippy Babuski, the pinch hitter. Fearsome pinch hitter hammers the fastball. Quack, she's got it. First two reach for Lazy. Nobody scores thanks to some great defense. In particular, the diving catch from Turducken. That was a beauty. Yeah, fantastic catch. Definitely play of the series so far, uh, saving any sort of damage in that fifth inning. And uh, then Maxine Quack's in the right place at the right time to end that inning. That could have been dangerous from Lazy. He's still hitting the ball hard. It's just Luke's getting great outcomes. Well, enter I Tiger and enter a significant change in velocity. He is uh, built much more differently than Yose Yish, and he shows it there. Three or uh, four fastballs in a row, I believe. Getting the swinging K back to the top of the order for the Mallards. It's a 3 nothing ball game here. Some stellar pitching from the Mallards. Some great situational pitching from Lazy to keep it at 3 nothing. Wait for Trait. Going to come online here for Nymphy ACI with two strikes. But she fights it off. That is a classic Nymphy ACI hit. She's going to fake like she's going for a second, but she is going and she's in there. Drop or not, she would have been safe. Aggressive base running from Luke Archer. Yeah, that ain't no fake from Luke. That is pure, just a hustle baseball, hustle double aggression there. You love to see that. 
Uh, this one, a floater over second base. There's no guarantee Lazy's, Lazy's going to catch that. Bad boy, able to get it over his shoulder. I make the grab for out number two, but that could have been more danger, you know? That could have been run production in an immediate payoff for Luke. Let's see what he can do with two outs. And Platarinkos, the ever dangerous Platarinkos, he gets the opportunity now. But quickly, two strikes. Will we see another fastball here? We do. It's high. 15 pitches thus far for I Tiger. The early check swing, Luke, fortunate it was out of the zone. That was a bit of a misfire there. Hammers that one. One hop onto Baboa. Had him played perfectly. And that ends the sixth inning. More good situational pitching from Lazy. Baboa, Baboa. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Campbell over to make the play. He's got the locked in mojo, so the defense not as much of a, you know, a heart attack as you might normally have it. Another time through the order here for uh, Luke against Lazy. So we'll see if Lazy starts to adjust and find some success or make continue to make quick outs. It looks to be uh, that's going to be the case. Yeah, he knows he's getting strikes, so he's swinging, and you can't really blame him. But the defense positioned perfectly. They're making all the plays right now. Three hits through six innings so far, surrendered by Khaki Campbell. He's throwing a gem. On to the seventh. Yeah, Luke is really pitching uh, at the top of his game here. We thought he couldn't do any better than he was doing our last uh, game with Candace Lauterbury, but Khaki Campbell is just blowing everybody away right now. Speaking of blown away, I Tiger earns himself a strikeout there. That'll bring up Schnauz Duckbill the third. Luke having a lot of trouble adjusting, it looks like, early to the B low of I Tiger. Yeah, it looks like he's on some of these pitches just a tick late. But the velocity is starting to become a concern for I Tiger through 23 pitches. Ooh, the velocity taken off right there with the changeup, and it fools Luke Archer for the strikeout. That's not the first uh, good sequence we've seen from Lazy in this game. He's gotten a few good strikeouts in, in, the, in the midst of giving up uh, a few runs here. He's, he's really uh, someone who excels at switching up his pitches and getting people off time with his entire arsenal. Or ball looped in to Jackie Yaki. Minus 19 on the throw. You hold your breath there if you're a Mallards fan. But he makes the throw and the one pitch, one out. Kaki Campbell can't be stopped right now into the glove of Duckville. Two pitches, two outs. It's like these fielders are magnetic right now. Everything's just going right where they can reach it. Lazy can't get anything going. He's still putting swings on the ball. Uh, but it's just unfortunate for the Blackboards. Luke is pitching a fantastic game. That'll end the seventh. Look at it. And really, absolutely nothing in this game. You can say what you want about the liners going at fielders. With with the exception of one hit, nothing has been you know threatening towards the track or the wall. These are stopping short as Luke fights one off up the middle. Look at add some shirts. It's a testament to Luke's accuracy on the hill. You know, he's putting the pitches where he needs to in the zone, but Lazy can't quite get his bat around on it, you know, in order to have the success he wants or needs. Lazy needs to find a way to adjust to the way Luke's playing the corners, but he just seems to can't. He keeps hitting the ball too square for his own good. And yeah, that's no fault of Luke. He's pitching a great game. Got a change up per perhaps to Hammer there. Gets under it with Maxine Quacks. Should be caught by Dizzle it is. So one down here in the top of the eighth. Khaki Campbell going to remain in the game. We saw this in game number two with Candace Lauterberry getting the, the assignment for the duration of the game evolution at eight and two thirds. Kaki Campbell's gonna get a similar call here. Two down, Nymphie ACI swinging. And that's a quick inning. Three nothing into the bottom of the eighth. Campbell back on the mound. Strike one. He's still locked in. He's still got good juice, you know, as far as velocity goes at a 63rd pitch upcoming here in the eighth. Lazy stays with that curveball nicely, pokes it up the middle. So a leadoff single for him. Some good speed over there at first. The eight-hole hitter, Jay Dizzle, fouls it off. Two quick strikes. He's going to look for a curveball to get him on two strikes, and it could be two. Dizzle, Dizzle can run, though. Quacks has to fire. She does. It's a twin killing. Wow, Luke's ability to turn that right there, that's huge. It was a perfect pitch. Again, Lazy can't do anything but swing at it. He has to offer it some of these, or the count's just going to be, you know, strike on strike on strike. Luke is painting the corners fantastic. 
looking for a three pitch strike out there. Lazy fouls it off. Going with an outside changeup. Weekly hit to Quacks. Out at first. Three out stand by between the Mallards and a two to one series lead. You know he wants more though. Pack a punch out of the pen. Yeah, this is not what the house had the odds on, I think. Uh, for the Mallards to be this dominant through three, you know, two plus games. We'll see if Lucas shut the door in this game three. The whiff or trait quickly for Angie Affleck. She's got four home runs and eight RBIs, but a 239 batting average. She swings and misses and goes to tenths. We'll see if that makes any effect on the bottom of the ninth with her defense. There's Platervinkos. Hammered. Left center field over the shortstop. Does it split the gap? No, Apple bum. He cuts it off. Platerinkos retreats to first, and it's a one-out route. Yeah, good by Lazy to cut it off. Luke able to know his speed. He wasn't going to get another hustle double out of that one. Hammered by Peckin. Caught. Two down. A lot of aggression from both players. Number three. Duckbill the third swings and misses. Back a punch, looking to keep everything right where it is. He's a strike away from doing so. The pitch, curveball low. One, two. Beautiful screwball, it looked like. Low and in, catches the zone. And that holds the Mallards to their three runs. Going out for the complete game is Khaki Campbell. Let's Hammer. see if we can pull it off. Right center field. It's going to roll all the way to the wall for a leadoff. Extra base hit. Nymphy ACI with a strange route. Lazy doesn't challenge for third. It's a double. Yeah, that's a great start for Lazy here in the ninth inning. Get that leadoff runner on. But then he's going to pop one up. Next pitch. That's great for Luke. Going to leave a runner at second base. And uh, now he's only going to get two more outs. Yeah, swinging on that first pitch. Curveball was Lazy. Non-productive out. But some good hitters coming up for Lazy in this inning. She hammers this one left center field. Turducken, he plays the angle to cut it off smartly, throwing it into second. That breaks up the shutout. The Blackbirds on the board and the tying run to the plate. Just goes to show how difficult Lazy can be to just keep quiet for an entire game here. It's going to pop up to right field. Aflac and Nymphiesi. Looks like Nymphiesi are going to call off Aflac to make the grab. Uh, another fortunate out for Luke. Let's see. One more. Tying runs at the plate, though. Still going for the complete game is the pitcher, but that's going to be another single. And all of a sudden, the tying run lurks on first base. The winning run to the plate in Kid K. And it's another start for the Mallards that goes eight and two thirds pulled at the last moment for Greta Rubber. Let's see if Greta can shut the door. We've got a pinch runner coming in for Lazy. Tama Balanza on it first. Blazing speed. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Rubber looking to slam the door, but it's fair, and it's down the line. One is in, Tampa Balanza. He's being waved in. The throw from Aflac will not be in time, and the Blackbirds have tied the game. Oh, my, oh, my. Is that lazy tie in the game with two outs in the ninth inning again in a clutch situation? I mean, what can you expect? There's a reason why people call him the greatest. Wacky Wanda now. She's got a chance to win it. Luke must set, he's trying to send this to extras. He's going to walk Wacky Wanda. Take his chances with Jay Dizzle and why not? Ooh, more chess though. Looks like Lazy's going to pull out Jay Dizzle to go against Rubber. It's a big moment. I don't think Rubber's faced three batters. This might be the third, so she would be ineligible to be pulled herself, I think, in this she scenario. Is, uh, she has been roughed up in this series. Juicy Jones called upon to be the hero. It's a dangerous hitter. Very dangerous hitter. Pitch hitting for the shortstop. He rips it, but Platerinkos has it. And it'll be free baseball here in the XBL semifinals game number three, tied at three. That's really awesome how great Luke has pitched in this game to get to this point. It's unfortunate for him to give up three runs, but uh, we've been talking pitching, 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 pitching. And I think we've forgotten to remind Luke that it's He's still got a hit here against Lazy, and it's been a while since he scored. So we're in the 10th. It's time to get on the horse and, and swing at some baseballs, get some success, and then and then get back on the hill and put Lazy down again. Lazy probably mulling over his defensive options after 
some chess moves made in that bottom of the ninth. And what a bottom of the ninth it was, tying the game. Looks like Tim Ablanza stays in it short. Juicy Jones will play second. Not sure how they rate defensively. Perhaps we will find out. Here's Teddy Turducken, whose catch in left center field looks even bigger now when you consider the score. Definitely saved a couple runs with it earlier in the game, at least one. Yeah, it was a humongous grab. Swing and a miss. 100 miles an hour from Pack-A-Punch. When you think of these bullpens, you definitely think of the advantage going to Lazy. Yeah, he stacks it that way for a reason. You know, Lazy knows how when it comes down to the nitty-gritty in these seven-game series, he's going to need to use all the bullets in his arsenal from that pen, uh, no matter how short his games are in the regular season. So he's built to last, and, and Luke's going to have a, a tough challenge to go up against. He gets Aflac on there, though, on the deflection. Or excuse me, it was Gadwall. Gadwall, yeah. So Gadwall reaches potential go-ahead run. She's locked in, still doesn't have much speed. Quack's going to foul this one away. Luke likely not even thinking about running with the RBI dud at the plate. Strike two. Jeez, what a pitch from Lazy. I mean, that is pain. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout on the fastball. Two down. Decision time for Greta Rubber. It was ineffective, to say the least, in the bottom of the ninth. Pulls her without much hesitation. It'll be Krombekind. Yeah, that's not a tough decision from my end either. If I'm Luke, you know, Greta did not do the job. Uh, and, and she just got roughed up too much in that inning. And she just got to sit. We got to see what we can do in the rest of this game. The 2-1 to Katarina Krombekind from Pack-A-Punch. Swing and a miss. See if we see another fastball here with two strikes. Off speed, catches him a little off guard, jams him. Three down in the 10th, a chance to win it for the Blackbirds. Yeah, all of a sudden this game flipped on its head. The minute Lazy really got those runners at first and third, you had a feeling something had to give, and he got that ball down, down that uh, right field line, scoring the runs, huge moment. And now it's all his to win, you know, in extra innings if Luke can't score. Heck a punch, staying in the game, locked in. He's out number one. Maybe a sneak peek of game four here. Chance Lauderbury Jr. fits that archetype of the low velo starter that Luke Archer enjoys so much. Hammered left center field in ACI. She's got to get there, and she does. Two down in the bottom of the 10th, but Lazy still a good swing away from ending it. He will not do it here. Beckham gloves it. Three down. A lot of turns over for Luke in this 11th, so that's huge. See if you can find a way to manufacture. Pack a punch is First locked in. Locked in indeed. The velocity with that locked in now just starting to creep down, but still going to hit triple digits, or rather 99 there. Whiff for trade activates, but it's usually not a problem for Nymphy ACI. I will see how he makes contact here, or if he does, he doesn't. There's that triple digit fastball for another strikeout. Yeah, not sure if Luke's just not seeing this high velo well. He seems to be really behind the ball, especially that last swing, just kind of hacking at it. It's time for him to get, you know, the bat head quick through the zone and, and try and uh, get these runners on. He hammers that one, and it's into the glove of Juicy Jones, the defensive replacement not in there for his speed, but he does have a good glove and he shows it there. Big play from Lazy, you know, with his backup infielder. Not always going to be guaranteed that those guys are ready to make a play like that. One, two, three, go the Mallards. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Lauderberry Jr. back out there to face Amy B. Three, four, and five do up for the Blackbirds. This has been an excellent game and an excellent series. The XBL semifinals. Up the middle, Platerinkos has it, fires. Too much speed and lazy to the board. Uh, lead off runners on for Lazy. Great speed. This is danger. Luke misses outside with a curveball. Likes to work that up and away angle. Does Lazy think about sending the runner here? Instead, he hammers the ball out to Turducken. Runner moves up 90 feet. It's another single. The winning run stands at second base. That was a scary pitch from Luke. He's lucky Lazy did not park that. Right. Yep. Now we're looking at, I think, a pinch hit scenario. Not Tim Time of Lens is going to hit. Maybe he'll drop down a bunt. We have seen Lazy employ the bunt before. Not here, however. He's taken the first two. 
This one will find the zone, and Tama Blanza pops it up. Luke was playing shallow. That could have been a disaster. The game's over if it's over his head. Instead, it's a routine out. One down. I mean, yeah, any base hit should score that runner. So Luke just trying to keep uh, his fielders as close to home plate as possible. Swing and a miss. Kid K down 0-2. The changeup, he lays off. Fouls that one off. May have chased just a bit. Popped up. Foul territory. Peck in ranges. She's got it. Two down in the 11th. Wacky Wanda. The mass is second out. Yeah. The tying run on second. The winning run. I'm sorry. The winning run on second. Excuse my confusion there. Two and two to Wacky Wanda. The 2-2 two -two changeup takes. Now the runners get a head start. The curveball mid. This is outside. Runners actually weren't going, but the bases are loaded. The second baseman, number and he's got to find the zone. Here's the juice. This is a dangerous person to have at the plate. Could be a hero here. Two strikes on him, however. Goes with a changeup. The one, two, inside. The two, two, hammered. Left field, Turducken, slide, oh. and makes the catch, we play on. Oh my God, can Turducken do no wrong? I mean, he's already made one fantastic play in this game, but now that one, that's got to top it, right? I mean, that saves the game from ending right then and there. Defense in left field for Luke Archer has been exquisite. And, and clutch, I mean, he doesn't get more clutch, like you said. And it earns him the right to bat in the 12th at least. <laughs> Trying to get aboard. He will not hear one down. What a play. I still, yeah, I can't believe he made that one. This this is XBL playoff baseball at its finest. I mean, you know, we're only in the semifinals here in the XBL. There's so much more to come here uh, from these two. And then we have, you know, Ashnod and, and yourself. We were coming up soon, too. Yeah, hopefully uh, before too long, we'll get that one going. It'll be tough to live up. To this one, however, as Luke earns himself a hit, feels like perhaps the first in a minute. Now Mojo increase over there on the runner. Still not very good speed. Here's the hero, Turducken. He's been a game saver with the glove. Can he save the Mallards with the bat? He's going to do his best. It's a, le it's a single here, so two are on with one out. I believe Quacks. No, Gadwall. The locked in Gadwall. Five for five is Gadwall. She takes. Wow, yeah, look how locked in she is. Ready to crush is uh, Gwendolyn Lynn. She's got low pitch, too, so Lazy's got to stay away. You can see him playing high in the zone. Taking all the way is Luke. Gadwall will walk, and I don't blame Lazy for pitching around her. The RBI dud quacks will be the one called upon against Little Lackey, the flamethrower out of the pen. These two both in huge scenarios. That one lined over to second. It's on the ground. On a oh, double play. Out at first. Another ground ball. Double play when Lazy needs it most. And he escapes the damage. These two trading clutch pitching here. Back and forth and back and forth. And that was Little Lackey. She earns herself a single up the middle. She's already locked in. She's faced one batter. Wow, Lackey is... Yeah, putting on the work right now. She's got to be feeling good after the way she put away the Mallards in the last inning and then gets a single. That's that's huge in the playoffs. Quickly two strikes on Apple Bum. Going to go with that low and away changeup. Softly hit over the glove of Peckin. Affleck gets to it. Does she have time to throw to second? Pitcher running still fast enough, and it's another situation here for Lazy where the first two have reached. Yeah, no outs. Yeah, no outs. The winning run at second in the form of Little Lackey, the reliever, popped up. Looking a lot like how we saw this go down last inning. Does Lazy challenge Affleck? No. Yeah, it's a tough send, you know, with a pitcher like that. I guess you got to play conservative if, you, if you're lazy. Chance Lauderberry Jr., he has pitched in all of the extra innings thus far. Has not broken yet. He is bent, but he has not broken. This curveball on 3-0. Lazy is swinging. He hammers it. Deep right field. The Blackbirds win. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. What a shot from Lazy to end it. 
poor Chance Lauterbury Jr. I mean, he, he left a hanger up there, and uh, that was some T-ball for Lazy uh, to put a stamp on this game three. We were talking almost all game about the master class on the mound from Luke Archer pitching to Lazy, but really it's Lazy's pitching that wins the day. I mean, I, I missed the line score there. I got on my second monitor. Lazy didn't score again after the fourth inning. I'm sorry, Luke didn't score again after the fourth inning. Nothing but zeros put up from that point on from the pitching staff, uh, the, the the wonderful bullpen of the Blackbirds, and that gave Lazy his chance. Yeah, it took him 12 innings, but he got it done, and now he leads the series 2-1. to one. Yeah, humongous uh, clutch gene from Lazy there. He scored three runs in the ninth inning and then three runs on the homer in the 12th. Uh, to put a stamp on this game three, he you know, Luke was pitching great as we as you already alluded to, but it was lazy who managed to hold Luke for a longer time. That's this that's the name of the game sometimes. You know all this we're talking about one thing, and then all of a sudden the other player in the background is just working hard to stay in it the entire game, and lazy stayed in it. You know it didn't get out of reach for him at any point, uh, and he can, and he had success when he needed to. He got out of jams when he needed to. He saved runs from scoring. Uh, when when we were busy talking about all the plays Sir Duckin had made, lazy was probably erasing. Uh, base runners and leaving runners left on base, you yeah. know, in the midst of that. And and that was what was happening in the background that allowed him to stay in this game. So props to him for doing what he always does, you know, to to keep his head above water and get ahead in a series. But Luke played great baseball, too. I mean, this is the makings of a classic series. If you expected Lazy to come in here and roll on Luke, I think you, you're in for a completely different scenario right now. Will Lazy take game number four in that 3-1 stranglehold, or does Luke win at home and make this a best of three down the stretch? We'll find out soon, folks. We're going to step away for a quick break. The players will requeue, and we'll come right back to you here on the XBL. Colonial Plaza, will it give us a follow-up classic to what we just saw? It'll be a tough task, but in any case, should be fun here. The home of the Milwaukee Mallards. Not a, very, not a super commonly used stadium. Has some quirks to it. Players say hello. Blue commutes for focus. Amy B's set to take the first pitch from Bolacornis Thunderduck. Yeah, you know, we got... Uh... 
like I said, big colonial here, big gaps, big foul ground, long fences, but short, you know, just short walls out there, you know, at the, at the distance. So interesting to uh, to play here, especially in the daytime. Jacko Yakko, he finds himself ahead two and oh. Now Thunderduck is going to surrender a base hit here to Lazy. Thunderduck, yes, he's that low velo four starter that we predicted, but he doesn't. I don't think he has quite as much accuracy as the as Candace Slaughterberry Jr. So while the formula is still the same, he's going to have to execute a little better. He executes right there. A ground ball double play gives Lazy a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, great ground ball double play there from Luke. We saw a lot of that manufactured by his pitchers on the hill in this series. So now if he ACI, the ACI. And it, it's King Flip, who we've seen in a couple of different builds over the years. This season looks like he's a low velo starter. And that's his assignment here in game number four. Kid K, she's got it. Yeah, the low velo worked out a little bit for Lazy. You know, he gave up some initial runs in the last game, but we talked about how he was able to keep Luke uh, off the board after a while with Yeesh, and then, you know, once he switched to his high below, the game really changed, so we'll see if that strategy remains the same for him in game four. I'm trying to take a commanding 3-1 lead in this uh, semifinal series, best of seven. King Flip only featuring a three-pitch mix. You don't see that a whole lot from starting pitchers in the XBL. We'll see it here tonight. Fa uh, uh, Four-seam fastball, changeup, and curveball. Two strike pitch, Luke with the contact swing, flips it up the middle in front of Yakko. Aflac, she's aboard. Now the shortstop, number Here's Platerinkos, he's been a bit quiet, at least tonight. One thing that's been interesting between these two players, we have not seen a lot of long balls. We saw the walk off moments ago, but uh, there really hasn't been a big total. Yeah, that's quite true. I mean, they've been hitting a lot of singles, moving runners along, taking walks, uh, just playing more station-to-station -station type baseball. I mean, it's tough on 93 Ego to really powder the ball like you're used to. These guys are up there, you know, it's almost at the highest difficulty of the game, but yeah, it's it's a testament to how tough the game is, but it's a testament as well to how these two get it done any way they possibly can and how the game can change at this level in, in playoff scenarios like this. Uh, the speed at the top of this lineup on board for Camille Peckin. Big power, big contact. It looked like Lazy perhaps chose not to dive at that line drive. I thought maybe there was a play, but could be wrong. King Flip in ahead of the count, 0-2. Good check from Luke. That check even better, in my opinion. Very close to being called a strike. Going to a similar spot as Lazy, but it's hammered out to Yakko. There will be no tag. Yeah, Luke wants that one back. He hit just a little bit too hard on the line, but now he's got a huge hitter. So with two outs, it's now stuck. Bill at the plate. All he needs is something to hit, maybe something in the gap, or maybe you know, let's see one of those homers we were just talking about. We we want to see. That Bill the third. He's behind. Looking to trade zeros is lazy, and he will. He just fooled him on that changeup inside. Breaks his bat there. It's frustrating strikeout for Luke. Uh, but these two leaving runners on in this first inning. Hammered. A lead off hit for Lazy. He had a single in the first inning that was erased by a double play. Luke going to look for something similar here. Baboa has the contact versus righty straight. What you going to do when he comes for you? Baboa, Baboa. <laughs> <laughs> Affleck, she's got it on the backhand. Gets it on in, so Baboa retired. Like he wanted in the plate. He's got to go yard in this lineup this postseason. Turducken, defensive wizard out there. He makes the play. There's still more quick outs in this game, it seems like, on Lazy's end. You know, we talked a lot about how that was his bane in the previous game, even though he did come away with the win. And, uh, we see in the second quickly he's put away. So the offense back out on the field for the home team Mallards. After not a one, two, three inning, but a quick inning nonetheless for Bullicornis Thunder Duck. King Flip, he threw 23 pitches in the first. His 26th pitch is hammered, dead center field. Caught by Yako for the first out. 
Yeah, loud first out there from Luke. We'll see if the power in his uh, bottom of the order can do anything here. Quickly two down. Both players more than happy to swing at pitches that they do hittable. That is an extremely quick and efficient inning for King Flip. One, two, three, go. The Mallards back at the top of the third we go. Yeah, not accustomed to these two swinging this much, you know. Normally they even will take a couple strikes in the count just to try and find, you know, something more hittable that they want. But they're really aggressive tonight. Plotarenko's with a great dive. Can't make the play in time over to first. Infield single to lead it off for Lazy. Yeah. There are slow runners in this lineup for both teams, but it just seems every time that that diving play occurs, it's on a speedster. The pitcher King Flip flies out for the first out. But to the top of the order we go for the Blackbirds. On a side that we haven't brought up this evening, we also do have in about 30 minutes time following this cast, our AAA World Series kicking off. As Lazy still second base here, we got Big George going up against. This is Eduardo, a huge matchup in the AAA. Back is Affleck. It's going to die on the track. Lazy has an opportunity to tag. He takes that opportunity. He's in there. So two down, a runner 90 feet away for the Blackbirds. Jack Oyaka versus a curveball is early. Quickly 0-2 to the off speed goes Thunderduck. Good take from Lazy. An even better take from Lazy. The high curve on... 2-2, two, two loops in there, a looking strikeout. A beauty at that, and that ends the inning. Absolutely froze him. I mean, Luke has been painting the corners themselves. I, I mean, these two have almost played part, like really similar games here tonight. They're both yeah. really efficient on the hill, uh, playing edges, not leaving a lot for the other person to take advantage of at the plate. So there, therefore, the other person's still hitting the ball, but they're not getting huge results. You know, just more here and there. Wacky Wanda has to do the world's quickest 180 not to overrun that ball. But she does make the catch. And the ACI robbed by Baboa. Two down, more quick outs. King Flip has only thrown 32 pitches. And he's feeling that locked in mojo. He's got a little bit of juice now on his accuracy junk and velo. And uh, he's going to look to use it. Angie Affleck looking to get something started with two down in the bottom of the third. It's a scoreless game following a classic. In game number three, Lazy coming out on the top. The whiffer trade activates for Affleck, but she's run the count full. See what gives with King Flip. Just inside, and it's a two-out walk. There's the good eye from Luke. Let's see if I uh, can do something more with two outs. Got Plotarenko's bat and swings at the first pitch, pushes one right into the outfield. Good first to third. Uh, awareness from Luke there with the uh, base runner. A two-out threat here for the Mallards. This was Lazy's specialty in game number three, silencing these rallies. Will he do it here? He's got to neutralize the fearsome Camille Peckin. But she goes up the middle, and it's past the glove of Bob Boa. One is in. A good start from the runner on first. Will he be waved in? Looks like he will, but now retreats. Stacky gets him in a rundown. Luke coming home. He's out, and that ends the inning. Oh, valiant diddle effort from Luke there to try and get everybody to be safe and squeeze an extra run out of the deal, but he does get one. Lazy trying to punch right back on the first pitch. Hits one deep in the left center field gap when MVACI has to make a grab on the run. More quick outs. That one, of course, scalded, however. You know, I don't, I don't hate the idea from Luke. Uh, you need every run you can possibly get. I know he still had good hitters coming up, but you know, why not at least see if you can catch him sleeping? If there was ever a player to catch sleeping, it probably wouldn't be lazy, though. Yeah, absolutely true. You never know how sharp he's going to be. It's, you know, you just got to expect him to be at the top of his game every time. Quickly disposed of in the fourth, so Luke's still got the lead. Yeah, despite his name, Lazy is certainly not Lazy out there on, on the field. Duck Bill the third after fouling one off. He's in a 1-1 count. Faces a curveball for a strike. Power versus right-handed pitchers is the trait. Third baseman for the Mallards staying alive. I don't even think we finished our talking point before Lazy had made three outs in that last inning. It was another quick one. Yeah, you know, he's really been blasting through these innings. It's uncharacteristic to see Lazy swinging in so many early counts. It's It's got to be a testament, like I said, to how Luke has 
is pitching the ball, you know, he's, he's forcing him to have to swing. You can't sit there and stare at the ball forever if it's going to be in the zone. Uh, but if it's not what you want to hit, you're not going to get the results that you want. You know, it's going to be quick outs and tough times. Here's Turducken. He has two home runs in this postseason. Softly hit up the middle, uh, past the back hand attempt of Balboa. That's two in this game that I think he may, may have been able to get. Instead, he doesn't. Would have been tough to turn two if he'd left his feet anyway. But the first two have reached here for the Mallards and now trying to split the gap is Luke. It's down. One is in. Two are going to score on the two RBI double and it's three. Nothing Milwaukee. That's how you capitalize. Two on, no out, smash one right into the gap, and now he's got another runner in scoring position. He is far from done here. It looks like three nothing in the fourth. Makes the tag up attempt, draws the throw. Good, good play there all around. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. Full of corners, Thunder Duck. King Flip, he was locked in at one point. He's tense now. Yeah, velocity and jump really dipping as Luke goes on the run. Jay does have to pick it up deep in the hole. Short makes the throw in time. Good play. Not a lot of speed on the runner. Yeah, saves a run. If that, that slow roller gets by him there, that is the fourth run of the game for the Mallards. And on the next pitch, it's an out, a ground out for Nymphy ACI. So limiting the damage there is lazy. But Luke strikes for two. He leads 3 nothing. And here come the Blackbirds as a, a little bit of a trip out there by Angie Affleck is going to yield a triple to the Blackbirds. Yeah, it could be a crucial mistake for Luke. That's one of those things that might be the, you know, the match that sets off Lazy to his, his scoring parade. But you, you hope that's not the case. We'll see what he can do. The run comes in immediately on the board are the Blackbirds. And looking at that play again, I, I think it's one of those classic scenarios where you think you're definitely in a position as the runner goes throw down, not in time. But you think you're in a position to easily yeah, at least slide and touch the ball, but it, instead the angle isn't quite there and you end up diving and you, you overshoot the ball and whatnot. Platerinkos saves another run. Yeah, tough break for Luke there. You know, it is definitely frustrating when the fielder does not engage the correct, you know, way you want to catch the ball in the outfield. That's definitely one of those in-betweeners. So now Amy B, she can make it a one-run game. She could also tie it with one swing. That's fouled off. Thunder Duck delivers a perfect strike. He does like this two-strike changeup. It's outside. Now going to go down and in with a curveball. Does it fool Lazy enough? Off the glove of Peckin. The run comes in. And it's 3-2 to two, Milwaukee. That is, effort. that is a really tough break for Luke. He wants to end this inning. Peckin tried to make a really good play there, but could not. Now falling behind on Jack Oyako, who hammers this one. It'll go foul. That was scalded. Going back to the looping curveball, getting a strike is Luke. A wild 2-2 two, two, makes it 3-2. Going back to that curveball, and it's low. So two on, two outs, and the tying run at second. We're in the fifth inning here of game four. XBL semifinals, Lazy hits the gap. He's tied the game and more. Nymphy ACI gets it back in, but it is four, three Blackbirds. There's that clutch hitting from Lazy, capitalizing on the drop from Shemiel Peckin. Top for Luke to, to have to endure that, you know, especially as this one rolls on to short, and that'll end the inning, but not before Lazy took that lead. Little one run game now, this time in favor of the Blackbirds. Scoring earlier in this game than they did in game number three. King Flip still out there working to Affleck. One down. Platerinkos hammers the curveball into the glove of Amy B. Two pitches, two outs, both on line drives. He's slapping the ball this pretty one. hard. This one going to go into the yeah. outfield as well. Exit velocity is there this inning for Luke. The outcome is not, but that single will help him out. Gives a chance to duck Bill with two down. 64 pitches for King Flip. The 65th is in there for a strike. Looking to close the book on the fifth inning is Lazy. Good check swing. Count runs full. Runner set to get a head start. 
Full count pitch outside and two of reach with two out. Yeah, it could be something building. This is a big hitter in the lineup in, in the form of Turducken, so Lazy does have to be careful. We are going to see I Tiger come out of the pen. Velo switch up. Turducken has the outside pitch, and it's left out there in the middle of the plate. But Lucas tied the game. Will he have the opportunity to send the leading run home? Looks like he will hold, but it's 4-4 four, four, thanks to Turducken. Yeah, playing conservative there. I might have took the risk, but, you know, it's smarter to keep those runners in scoring position for Gadwall, who's been hitting great in the playoffs as well. As this one lifted to right, looks like it's going to be foul. 1-1 one, one count. I Tiger greeted rudely on his first pitch of this inning by Turducken. Gadwall, she's been hitting almost 500, so flip a coin here, folks. The 3-1, strike. Big full count. Going to switch to that contact swing, presumably. He swings through it. But a run comes in for Luke. It's a 4-4 ball game. Anybody's game here as we enter the sixth. Wow, what a series these two are putting together. I mean, I it's just been back and forth throughout. Close games all the way through. One down quickly here brings up Wacky Wanda. Jumping and not... Not diving, I don't, yeah, I, I think that was probably the right call, but in any case, it's past the glove of the second baseman for a one-out knock, just sneaking it by there was lazy. Now Luke needs a ground ball. He's going to try and loop the curveball in, but it's hammered and two are aboard. Yeah, lazy right back at it again on the offense, puts those runners on base. He sets the table so well for himself. You have to be extremely careful. You know, you feel like you give up a couple of singles and, and you're going to be able to work your way through this and then all of a sudden it hits the gap or it goes over the fence and you're down multiple runs. The left side, oh, this one off the glove of Peckin again. Retreating and getting it there quickly is quack, so Lazy can't score, but that, you know, definitely could have gotten out at second perhaps, maybe wishful thinking. And you got to wonder, Dwayne, what is the plan for Thunder? Duck. He does not have a lot left in the tank. He's already gone five and a third. I mean, what are we doing here? I think we got to pull him. We got to we got to get the high velo in here now. Juicy Jones is at the plate. If you leave him something to hit, he is going to tee off on it. It's going to be Axe. Luke agrees, and he goes to Axe Muck Duck. A little bit of chess. Juicy Jones out of the game. Yeah, Bippy Babuski equally as dangerous as a replacement. So we'll see. Falls behind two and O. Oh. Swings on the changeup, gets back in the count. Dangerous pitch there, but it's fouled off. An opportunity for a strikeout for Luke. He just misses. The three two curveball in a dangerous spot, hit by Babuski. Oh. Fair ball down the line. It hits the chalk. Angie Affleck gets it back in. Two have scored. The third will hold. Dangerous play there at third, but it's 6-4 Blackbirds. Wow, that one literally as close as it gets on the right field line. And the Lazy looks like he's going to get another double. The uh, left fielder dies. It's going to be two more runs. Blackbirds have broken this game open. Back-to-back, -back, two run doubles. Place the Blackbirds ahead by four. They're looking good here as we creep into the last half of this good ball game. Muck Duck and Rubber, the high velo pitchers on this roster have been greeted rudely time after time. If the ACI, she goes back. She's got it. There's two down. Throw's going to go back into the cutoff, man. Uh, and then back to home. So good base running there from Lazy. Wants one more. It's 90 feet away. She won't get it, however. Assuming Quax doesn't fumble. She doesn't. But a very successful, I believe, four-run inning for the Blackbirds off the back of a couple big doubles. It's eight to four. That's it. That's how Lazy scores. He comes at you in bunches. He, like I said, he sets the table for himself. He was able to score four runs again in that inning. It's the second time he scored four runs in one inning in this game. So it's it's really overwhelming at times the uh, the way he piles it on. Pack a punch was brilliant in game number three. He comes back out for an assignment in game number four. Now Eight, nine, and one. Quacks looking to get aboard for what would probably be a pinch hit opportunity, I think. But she's behind. And 0 and 2. The Heat. A lot to handle here on 93 Ego. 
But she fights it off. Does it drop? It does. A leadoff single for the Mallards looking to get back in the game. Good single to start the inning. Maxine Quacks isn't a uh, very slow runner either. She's good speed at first, and uh, this will be a good opportunity for Luke to pinch hit. Try and set his own table. Let's see some more runs. We're, we're only in the six. Crombie Keen swings at the first pitch, sends out down the right field line. That'll be two. Just getting out, getting to it is B. Luke, he's challenging for the plate. He's got it. So he scores a run here in the bottom of the six. Looking for more on the double, the pinch hit double from Crombie Keen. That brings up Nymphy ACI, who's late on the first pitch. Yeah, he's going down in this game more than one time, but he's not out. Two quick strikes, whiffing on fastballs. Now the outfield turns shallow, and it doesn't matter. Striking out is Nymphy ACI. She's tense. You don't see that a whole lot. So now pack a punch working to Angie Aflac. Outside pitch trait goes inside. And Luke is late. Le leaves the curveball hanging. Luke hammers it into the glove of Apple Bum. Another hard hit out for him. So the chance goes to Platerinkos. Yeah, you can tell it's a pitch. Luke wanted back. He hit that well. This one ripped into right field. That'll be a hit with two outs. Lazy living a little dangerously with some of these off speed. I'd be surprised if he throws anything but a fastball and this at bat. There's one. One, Camille Peckin looking to cash in. She's late on that one as well. Two strikes. Pack a punch looking to send the Blackbirds back to the dugout. He does so. Three straight fastballs. She shatters her bat. We go to the seventh. But the Mallards get one. Yeah, I feel like uh, Luke just was that. That might have been him reaching out of the zone a little bit there. I think he was pressing to hit that fastball. Will it be Rubber or Lauderberry Jr.? It looks like it'll be Lauderberry Jr. The low velo reliever. Surrenders a line drive. Affleck again, the exact same malfunction out there. This time she has a chance to hold him to two, but the throw is errant. It sails. Oh, Luke's got to be careful or it's going to sail away. He's going to give up an extra base here in a playoff game. Just, uh, just an interesting all-around play. Yeah, no outs, so he's almost... Guaranteed to probably come across. Let's see what uh, Lazy does in response. Baboa at the plate. Waterbury Jr. Working to Bob Boa. The first two strikes came in quickly. He missed with the last one. Looking over his roster real quick. Two and two. Loops the curveball in there, gets him looking a big first out for Luke. There's probably not a, a good scenario where you strand the runner if you're Luke. You gotta keep it just to that one. That was a great strikeout to uh, expertly put Lazy away. The 0 2 popped up shallow. Yeah, it may have spoken too soon. If he can get to this one, he's got two outs. He wanted Nymphy ACI, instead, the AI takes it for him. Now there's two down. Can he pick up Angie Affleck in right field with a zero? He might. Quax has it. He survives. The defensive blunder to lead off the inning does not come back to bite him. And an opportunity to make good on that for the offense. That was massive from Luke. I mean, to recover there, that's that just shows his grit. You know, there's still time in this game for him to come back now. Let's see if he does it. Quickly 0-2, though. Pack a punch. Probably going to rear back here with the heat. He does. A check swing. Followed by another. So the 19th pitch upcoming from pack a punch. The 2-2. Another fastball, and he got him 100 miles an hour. Last and on the hill there is Pack-A-Punch. Lazy's got a ton of gas in that pen. He's not afraid to use it. Yeah, Pack-A-Punch, I-Tiger, and uh, Little Lackey. The fearsome velocity trio. Two strikeouts here in the seventh. Masterful pitching from Lazy. Brings up Gwendolyn Gadwall. Showing bunt, takes it back. Quickly two strikes. Could be a very efficient inning for pack a punch. The 0-2 outside. 
Gadwall, she's been great in these playoffs. She strikes out here looking. He strikes out the side. Huge from Lazy. He is looking so good with his bullpen in these games. Now batting for shortstop. Lauderberry Jr. did a great job working around the defensive mistakes in the seventh. He's back out for the eighth. Looking to keep it right where it is. Jay Dizzle with the whiffer trait. He whiffs way early. That's the opposite kind of strikeout than what we saw from uh, Packet Punch. Yeah, indeed. Great Packet placement, punch. great sequence. He's staying in the game, and he rewards his manager's decision with a single. Now that the right fielder, number 20. I thought maybe we'd see a pinch hitter there and give way to Lackey or Tiger, but instead he's staying in the right-handed strikeout artist. Hammered center field, Nymphy ACI races. She's got it. We're seeing wild throws here. As that one sails, is it another base surrendered? Oh. It is. This has got to stop. Yeah, you can't be throwing away balls, especially into the dugout like that. Gifting bases to lazy. And and, and the ruining the mojo for his players now. For now, Affleck and Nifty AC are still only tense from their batting. So I suppose fortunate to be at that spot. But now needing an out, and he's not going to get it. That's up out to Nifty ACI. Nine to five Blackbirds. Lazy takes advantage of the first trade. Yeah, he's going to continue to pile on. You know, Lazy, he just wants to score runs and win games no matter uh, no matter what the cost. Outside to Jackie Stacky. He's got the RBI, man. Dangerous hitter. Hammers center field, but Nymphy ACI should have it. She does. Blackbirds get one on the RBI single. With the pitcher spot on deck could be an interesting inning, inning for the Mallards who are looking to crawl back. You know, four runs definitely not out of reach. We saw Lazy score four runs twice in this game. You know, Luke can do it himself. So it's time to focus and uh, pony up and try and get some runs. The 30th pitch from Pack a Punch is into right field for a single. Quacks has been good in this game. She's good here. Another decision for Luke. Barely a decision at all. He goes with Smew Albellis. He's in power, right-handed bat. Good speed on first. Quickly, O oh and two. Pack a punch, looking for another K. Check swing. Staying alive is Smew Albellis. The one, two, another fastball, but it swung on and missed and into the dugout, so the runner will advance. Interesting play there, yeah. It's uncharacteristic of Lazy's catcher to just drop one in that in that moment. With the ACI swinging first pitch, skies it deep right field. It might try to No one catches it. Everyone's gonna reach base. They'll be at second and third with one out. That the door is open now for Luke Archer. Yeah, all of a sudden that something comes out of nothing. This is the time to score. This one crushed. Affleck hits it deep, and it drops in front of Apple Bum. Back-to-back -back outfield mistakes from the Blackbirds. The, there's runners at second and third with one down. What is going on out there? I have no idea, Weaver. Lazy cannot seem to get it together with either corner outfielder. He's got to take a moment, get a little lackey in here, and try and mitigate the damage. Two huge breaks from Luke Archer. They get him a run. And the possibility for more. He's going to have to catch up to some serious heat coming out of the hand of Lackey. 0 oh, 2, outside. Big hitter at the plate. Vladarinko switches to the contact swing, but it's no, to no avail. He strikes out, and there's two down. You have to think he's going to catch up to one at some point. But not there. This is the moment, then. He's got to. The 0-2, another fastball, another strikeout. The frustration from Peckin and Lazy gets out of it despite some blunders of his own. We head to the ninth. Yeah, Luke needs three quick outs. Got to keep it clean, take it to the bottom half, you know, within reach. Will it be Butterman or Rubber? I would think Rubber would be the choice, but she has been knocked around bad in this series.
A tough she decision could, here. Yeah. She could bat in the ninth if Luke has a, a rally. But the, the job now for Luke has got to be to put up a zero. Now batting the second baseman, number 19. Looked like he went with Greta Rubber, and now he's got to figure out where to put Albellis. Looked like a double switch came out. Albellis will stay at first. Out of position, but we know Luke doesn't care too much about that. Rubber pitching to Bob Boa. Swing and a miss. The 1 2 is a curveball low. Swing and a miss. A triple digit fastball strikeout of his own against Lazy. Yeah, we'll see a first baseman playing out of position has to come into effect at all. Lazy, or Luke's just going to try and put it away. You know, with the strikes around the zone, big heat, maybe a pop fly if necessary. Two quick strikes going with the heat. Hammered into the glove of Platarinkos. Two down. A better start here for Rubber. Looking to hold the deficit at three. And she does so. To the bottom of the ninth we go in game number four. Lazy three outs away from a 3-1 series advantage. Little Lackey, the flamethrower to the mound. Not a bad part of Luke's order either up at the plate. Let's see what he can do. Missing with the first two is Lackey. It's back in the count with a good fastball. Schnauz Duckbill the third looking to get things started for the Mallards. He's behind 2-2. Two, two. The two-strike pitch. Hammered up the middle. There he is catching up to that fastball. You knew it had to come at some point. Yeah, that was a good rep. That's a great leadoff hit. That's exactly what you need if you're Luke. Let's see if Turducken can follow up. Falling behind on the first pitch is Little Lackey to Turducken. We saw Lazy with a three-run comeback to tie the game last game. Will, will Luke get him back here? He's going to have another two-strike at bat. Facing Little Lackey. And he swings and misses. Triple-digit fastball. Too hot to handle. Little Lackey was placement. Lazy, you know, just living on the edge of the zone. That's so tough for Luke to reach. You can see he doesn't even want to go for that outside fastball there. Oh, doesn't want the change up either. It scrapes the zone. Another 0-2 pitch. Luke going to put some speed on it first. He forgot to do so, but not too late. Not even going to try and pronounce that guy's name. He's on it first with good speed, and there's two down. Back-to-back -back swinging Ks. Lazy's had huge success when he switched to his flame throws out of the bullpen. Let's see if that carries him to two big victories tonight. Maxine quacks the last hope, and she's down 0-2. 22nd pitch for Little Lackey, a fastball. No, I'm sorry, a changeup, but it misses. Another changeup, softly hit, backhanded by Boa. It's a 3-1 series advantage for the Blackbirds and Lazy. He's a win away from making his third World Series in three seasons. Yeah, huge for Lazy tonight to come away with two big, big victories uh, in an XPL semifinal. Congratulations to him tonight. Uh, you know, putting himself ahead, but Luke showed a ton of fight, a ton of grit. I mean, like I was saying earlier, this is like, you know, he's going nine innings with Lazy, playing all the way through every single game and keeping it, you know, on a needle's edge. So I, I don't think this is anywhere near over. We, we could see in the next session, you know, Luke coming right back. Yeah, we very well could. Uh, he's He's been competitive in all three games. The difference maker for me, besides the obvious, you know, clutch ability that comes from Lazy every, any single time you watch him play, has been that bullpen, that high powered, high velocity bullpen of the Tokyo, uh, yeah, of the Blackbirds has been nasty and has been uh, really unrelenting. I, I can't even think of a time that Luke made good progress against it. I believe most of his scoring in the game he won was early. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the velocity is going to be a factor. The, the rotations are going to be reset when they play game five. That means aces on the mound for both players. And uh, it'll be anyone's game, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, going to change things up immensely to have everything reset once again. Uh, we saw great games in game number one and two with those starters, so we'll, we'll, we'll surely, I think, see them again. Uh, Luke has a lot to take away from tonight as far as, you know, how close he kept these baseball games and how he was able to keep Lazy down and out when he was able to do so. So uh, this is this has the makings of another classic one, as we always say here on the XBL. I mean, these uh, are two of the best players in the game. They They play, they win, they adapt. Uh, each and every time they go out there, you know, you know, if they lose, they learn something. So 
I look forward to the next games in this one. And then uh, in just a few moments, I think Hummus and I are going to get together to uh, kick off our Triple A World Series. Is that not right? That's right, Big George, and this is Eduardo. The World Series matchup for the AAA that'll be played on 85 batting ego, 90 pitching, 90 base running, 90 defense. Uh, so stick around for that. Should be uh, an excellent start to that best of seven. We've had an excellent start to this one as well. It's 3 1 lazy. We can't wait to see how it concludes for news. Uh, if you're not tuned in for news on when these games go live and are scheduled, et cetera, et cetera, please, uh, you can join our Discord. That's where our community is is housed all you got to do is scroll down on the twitch uh, to the description click that link we'd be happy to have you with that said i've been weaver for prez anything anything left to say Dwayne? no thank you for joining me here for the first cast tonight uh we're gonna be back live in just a few moments once i reconvene with hummus and get the triple a guys ready to roll uh so shout out to our xbl players tonight for putting on a great semi-final shout out again weaver for being here uh to urban for getting us that promo on the go when he got it and uh everybody else who makes this happen we're gonna keep the baseball rolling this evening and uh the playoffs coming at you have a safe and pleasant evening if you don't join us for that. Good night, everyone.